So when one thinks of uh, French Indochina today, this is a map, um, a tourist map of the 1930s, um, you think of three countries, right? Uh, Vietnam, uh, Cambodia, and Laos. But actually, uh, French Indochina was actually constituted of six uh, different territories. There was Tonkin, Tonkin, uh, Anam, Cochinchin, uh, uh, Cochin China, and this you know co uh, correspond to North, uh, Central, and South Vietnam today. Uh, the Cambodia, uh, Cambodia, Laos, and uh, interestingly, Guangzhou. Wan. It's sort of an enclave in China that was going to be uh, France's equivalent of Hong Kong. The cathedral, uh, built in a high Gothic style, um, again straight out of France. Um, this was built in 1880 uh, and it still stands today. Not much has changed in terms of the actual building, but around the building um, is quite significantly different now. I mean, of course, at the time, this was a square. Today, uh, of course, it's just a hellhole of traffic, sort of, uh, you know, the, the, the cathedral sits in this island and there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of motorbikes and tra traffic uh, rounding the, the cathedral and it's fiendishly difficult to actually even cross the street to get uh, there. The Opera House, um, uh, built in 1897, um, it was inspired by the Paris Opera, of course, at Le Petit Palais uh, in, 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 in Paris. And actually, at the time uh, when visitors came from Europe and from France, they actually found it a very tacky copy of uh, the original in, uh, in, 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 in Paris. Um, well, th this scene is interesting, I guess, because you have all these sort of, uh, you know, a, a sense of daily life that is sort of the people, you know, uh, going about their promenades in the daytime and so on. I mean, that dry shores. That, um, and if you look at this, Today it's practically the same. The context is more or less the same. The people, sorry, the building is more or less the same. The context is only slightly different. You know, the people are different. The mode of transportation these days is no longer casual. Clearly, this Indo-Chinese style continued to develop and evolve uh, all the way through the twenties, and um, because there were a new generation of uh, architects that came from France who were more willing to sort of experiment sorry. with. Um, uh, um, local, um, uh, to understand and to learn more about local architectural styles and also experiment with architecture that was suitable for the tropical or subtropical climate. And uh, the form, I think, has its most uh, eloquent expression in this building, uh, the Musée de de la Bourse, which sat in the Botanic Gardens um, at the time. Uh, it was uh, built in 1929. Um, again, in form, if you look at it, far away, you think it's a Vietnamese uh, pagoda, but it actually sat, uh, sat alongside um, sort of colonnades that are, uh, in essence, European. So the form of the buildings is, is European, but the adornments are, are Vietnamese. Um, the Chinese colonized Vietnam for a thousand years, uh, from the Han Dynasty, from uh, uh, 100 BC to the Tang Dynasty, uh, 980. And during the Han Dynasty, Vietnam was known as uh, Nam Viet, Nam Yue. And the Tang Dynasty was known as An Nan. And um, there were two, An Nan, it means two things. Uh, it could mean peace in the South, but it, uh, it could also mean we suppressed the South. Um, this one instance where Chinese culture still uh, is very strong is in the language. Uh, so the Vietnamese language is known as Dien Viet, Sheng uh, Yue. It, it, it basically sounds a bit like uh, one of the southern Chinese dialects, like Cantonese or, or uh, Hokkien, and um, it is based on, 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 on a Chinese script. Uh, until sometime in the 1800s also, the Vietnamese wrote with Chinese characters, uh, what they called uh, Chu Nong, uh, which consisted of actual Chinese characters alongside Chinese characters that were invented, so that only exist in the Vietnamese language. And um, of course, in the 1800s, when the French Jesuits first came, uh, it, the language was too difficult. <laughs> so they, they created, uh, based on Portuguese, actually, um, a Latin-based uh, script to convey uh, Vietnamese. And it was called Kuo Mu, Guo uh, Yu, uh, which, which means uh, national language. And that is uh, still in use today. Wen Niang Dan Yu, which is a Confucius temple. And Confucius temples exist in the China, of course, and in countries in China's original sphere of influence. So Japan, Korea, uh, and Vietnam also has uh, Confucius temples. 
Um, the old town is known as uh, known for its 36 streets, um, uh, it's, uh, or, or 36 hang, uh, where each street um, actually has a different trade, so like tinsmiths or, or, or you know hat and so on. And interestingly, this is again my own conjecture. Of course, the Chinese word for hang uh, means streets. Uh, uh, so it, it also means sort of like trades or, or, or guilds. But I think what's interesting when you walk in the old town and only walk at dawn, where there are no people, uh, no traffic, <laughs> so that you can actually see the buildings, um, is there are all these uh, shop houses, like the shop house um, architecture that you see all over Southeast Asia. You can also find here, but with some variations, of course, these are far more ornate, you know, very much more influenced by the French uh, tradition.